welcome to another episode on the Virtual Shelling Network. I am Laura Manson and I am here today on one of the islands in the 10,000 Islands. This is Morgan Key and we are on a shell tour today with Nautical Life Shelling Tours and I'm so excited. Um, I kind of walked down the beach um, to try to, you can see Marco there in the very distance, but I wanted to try to um, find some cool stuff to show you today that you might not have seen before. So it is um, low tide here this morning. The tide I think is still going out. So this, all this stuff has just newly been uncovered. You can still see that there's still some puddles of water um, going on here. So what I want to show you guys is when the tide comes in over all of this kind of mud bank here, it really washes in a lot of stuff. This is a great place to come after storms because a lot of stuff blows in. And I wanna show you this rack line here and we're gonna investigate this whole thing. And there are so many awesome things in this rack line to show you guys right here. Alrighty, so we're gonna come down here a little bit and we are going to get our shell on. Let's go. Okay, first things first, always remember when you come shelling, it's always a good idea to wear some type of water shoe. I mean, these are my Fit Kicks. Um, there's lots of different brands out there that you can wear. Some of them have arch support, these do not. Um, so if you need arch support, I would maybe look into Keens. There's just a lot of brands. I'm not familiar with every single brand, but find shoes that you can walk on all of these shells and not have to worry about stepping on something sharp and hurting your foot. So we're going to investigate this wash up here. So if you can see this little like pile here, when all this water comes in for high tide, the waves push up all of these shells and all of this debris and it forms this big rack line and there are some amazing things here. So we're going to check it out and we're going to see what kind of fun things we find um, in these rack lines. So obviously we find shells, right? So here's a really pretty pattern juvenile conch. Oh, we also find a lot of talons here. So these are the alternate talons. I love talons. They look like giant coquinas. They're just so fun to find. Um, the rose petal talons, which are pink, we sometimes find here too. And the other shell that is really common is the Sunray Venus. And a lot of times we do find them like this, where they are um, a bivalve still intact, which is really fun. So this is also a really great place for minis and tinies. Oops, here's some of these sunglasses. So we'll take these as we pick up beach trash as we go. So this is a great place to get down low and look for those minis and tiny shells. Here's a little auger and a little NASA here. And I'll tell you, a lot of the time, you know, with these minis and tinies, you won't see them. You really do have to get down. Here's a, here's a drill. Doesn't the drill look like so big? <laughs> um, you really do have to get down and get low and really take your time going through these little um, shell pile areas looking for your minis and tinies. Um, oh, look at this little gaudy right here. Little gaudy nautica here because you won't you just won't see them if you're not if you're not crouched down and kind of looking. So um, I know a lot of you love the minis and tinies and just plop your little beach towel right here and um, go to town. I will also tell you, make sure you have a good shell bag. I know a lot of people like to bring an extra container with them um, for minis and tinies, um, which is totally fine. I, when I'm shelling, I don't have time to be opening and closing um, you know, a lid to like a pill bottle or something like that. Um, I'm too afraid I'm gonna drop the whole thing and lose all of my little shells. So I just make sure I have a quality shell bag. My shell bags um, are made with heavy duty mesh. So I don't have to worry about, it's very, very fine mesh. So I don't have to worry about any of my shells um, falling through the little holes, even the teeniest, tiniest little shells. Unlike the um, shell bags made out of the, what's it called, like the laundry bag mesh, you gotta be really careful because your little lentil traps will go right through those holes. So you don't wanna finally find your prized rental trap and then find out you get home 
and it fell out of your bag. So be, be cautious with that. Um, so as we're shelling here, um, you guys are probably going to notice there are certain shells that we find in certain places. Um, we do find a lot of the worm shells here. We do find a lot of the talons. Um, and there's a nice paper fig. Look at that. And we also will find angel wings too, although it is um, more difficult to find the angel wings intact because they are so fragile. So always make sure your bivalves are empty because that's a really pretty one. So you don't want them stinking up your shell bag if they're not. There's a little worm shell here. Here's another one. Oh, and look at this lace murex. Look at the pretty color on that. Look how pretty that is. That's beautiful. Perfect lace on that. So lots of shells to find up here. And I'm not even digging. I do have a digger that I brought with me, just like a little garden rake, but I'm not even needing to use that. I'm just gonna have fun looking for what's on the surface. Look at this really pretty shiny olive sitting right here. Look at that big, beautiful olive. Here's another olive up here. Look at this. Oh, this one's broken. It's a broken olive. So lots of fun shells in this little area. And this is also a fun place to find other treasures too, right? So you guys know that I'm a fan of finding all kinds of treasures, um, not just shells, but other beach treasures, such as driftwood, right? So we've got some pieces of driftwood. This is kind of a cool piece. I love driftwood. Driftwood looks so fun. Um, in a bowl, you can see like it. Sometimes they have the little holes in them. Um, I love finding driftwood. They make such great craft projects, and there's lots of different um, sizes and shapes of driftwood that you can find here. This is definitely a place for driftwood. So, if you like driftwood, um, make sure that you bring. I usually try to bring a bucket or a separate bag for driftwood because it will, it's kind of awkward in shape and it takes up space in your shell bag. So it'll just fill up your shell bag really quickly. So I like to bring in like a different, even just like a grocery bag. Oh, I almost stepped, I almost stepped on an alphabet cone. Look at that, um, right there. Perfect. I almost um, recommend bringing just like a grocery bag because the, driftwood sometimes can be really sharp too so depending on what kind of shell bag you're using you don't want to poke a hole in your bag and then you have a hole in your bag so um, if you're coming out here specifically for that I would recommend probably bringing a separate little container for your driftwood let's see what else we've got all right let's see what we've got down here I'm gonna kind of get down get down low and look because I don't want to miss don't want to miss anything look at that NASA really pretty yellow NASA I love the minis and the tinies there's another little wormy right here here's a little tulip and it really is impossible to pick up every shell I mean I know that you guys will message me and say oh my gosh you missed this shell and you miss that child, but it, you know, it's so hard to see every single, every single thing. Like sometimes you'll be looking right at something, um, and you don't even realize that you're seeing it. You know, I mean, I almost stepped on that alphabet cone and I didn't even, I wasn't even looking for it. So oh, is this a big shark eye? Look how pretty the shark eye is here. It's really pretty. And oh, there's another alphabet cone. Do you see it? It's not super pretty. It's a little broken, but it's an alphabet cone nonetheless. It looks better from this from this side. It's got some, let's see if I can show you guys. It's got some letters there. A little broken, but it's an alphabet cone nonetheless. It can go in the ugly alphabet cone jar. All shells have their own little personality. I love all these worm shells. There's a really pretty conch, these dark conchs. 
Conks are another shell that like, there's so many and it has to be like something that speaks to me in order for me to pick it up because they're another, they're another item that will shell, uh, fill up your shell bag very quickly if you're not careful. Oh, is it true? <gasps> Yay, look how pretty this true tulip is. It's like a light orange color. Look how pretty, gorgeous. Oh, I love finding true tulips. That's always a treat. True tulips can be tough to find and tough to find whole. And it's really awesome when we have the opportunity to to find one that's pretty like that. Good size too. And here's some more pieces of driftwood. I mean, you could literally pick up driftwood all day long. Here's another olive. Here's a really pretty little calico clam. Okay, so as we're starting to get into this rack line, you're gonna start to notice some interesting things. One of them is you're gonna see a lot of the lightning whelk egg casings. So these are really fun. When these dry out, they get really stiff, so they make really cool displays. This one has already hatched. You can see the little hole in the top. And what's interesting is the hole is in the exact same place on all of the sacks. So there's a pre, kind of a pre-drilled hole in all of the little individual casings. And the little um, material or skin or whatever that covers the hole is very thin. And the shells know that that is the exit point. So then they're ready to hatch. They go through that little hole and they're able to go out into the big sea and grow. Here's another little egg casing. So some shells will lay their egg casings. This is a tulip and they will lay their egg um, eggs on another shell or sometimes a piece of driftwood. But what's interesting is the different shells, um, the egg casings look differently. They have kind of a different shape. So this one is a tulip. You can see it kind of has like a, like a C shape here with a little notch. And then right at the top of the notch, right at the top of the C, you'll have the little hole. So that's where their little hole is. And you can see that these have also hatched, which is good news or most of them hatched. Yeah, most of them hatched. Sometimes they don't always hatch. Actually, I think most of these did. They're just filled with sand, yeah. Yep, so these hatched, which is great. You can see like, I don't know if you guys will be able to see the little hole. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in the camera. So this is a little tulip. So that's really fun. Um, this one over here is a horse conch. And this one's starting to dry out and they get kind of crispy sounding like crunchy so this oops I'm getting eaten alive today let's see this horse conch egg sack let me see if I can find they usually have the hole at the very top up here I'm trying to see if I can find you guys a hole to show you but this is kind of kind of shriveled up can't get it open but this is a horse conch egg casing I'm sure we'll find we'll find more and these kind of look like um, a cone like an ice cream cone you guys can see let me pull this one off so this looks kind of like an ice cream cone so that way that's how you know that it is a horse conch egg casing so we find lots of egg casing sometimes I don't always know um, what kind of egg casing it's from if you guys have watched episodes on the virtual shelling network, you know that sometimes I pick up an egg casing and I'm not sure what it is. There's not a whole lot of information on egg casings available out there, unfortunately. Here's another lightning whelk egg casing. So they look like big worms, snakes, dragons, um, something. And let's see if this one hatched. So this one did, you can see, let me turn it around so you guys can see the little holes. 
So all of the little holes in the top are gonna be in the exact same place. You see the little hole there, little hole there, which is kind of cool, it's kind of fun. So, it's always nice when they hatch, we like that. It's full of sand. Here's a little sea tree. I love these little sea trees. Those are another little fun beach treasure that I love to find. And up here, we find more little fun sea trees. Sometimes they'll be attached to another shell, which is fun for like display. Um, sometimes we call them sea whips, but I call the sea trees sea trees because they're a little bit more stiff. The sea whips are more like this. And they're really kind of like um, softer, I guess. And they come in different colors. This one's black. They come in yellow and purple. And they're so fun as a shell display. Um, or you can glue them on canvas for like a mixed media effect. That's always really fun. So I stick those in my shell bag too. I love finding sea whips. Oh, and here's some cool pieces of driftwood too. So... Like these are always really fun. Just little pieces like this to throw in your bowl. And then here is in there, you can see the little clam that's still in there that makes these little holes. You guys can see. And then here's a cool piece of driftwood too that has a bunch of patterns on it created by not sure what, but look how cool. I don't know if that's created by some type of creature. I don't know if it's a shell or a what, but look how cool that is. That's really cool too. I love that. I love finding stuff like that. Here's another big horse conch egg casing. So sometimes they're in big clumps like this. Look at all of these. And each one of these has multiple babies inside. Each one of these individual um, little sacks so you can see how many baby shells, like a ton of baby shells are hatched every time one egg casing is laid, which is really cool. And here is a little egg casing. This looks like it's probably from a tulip and it was probably attached to something here, a shell or a piece of driftwood or something, and it came off. But this is the little clump that you'll see it doesn't look like these hatched because I don't see any little holes and it's completely dried out. Um, so unfortunately this one didn't hatch, but these still make cool little beach treasures to put in um, a little bowl or a little shell bowl is like a little accent too. So that's always kind of fun to find. And let's see. This is definitely not always about just the shells. There's so many other fun treasures you can find. Okay, so we're gonna come down and we're gonna get into this fun rack line here. Here's another whelk egg casing. And once these dry out, these are so fun, but this one's completely empty. You can see all the little holes where they hatched from. So that's really fun. So you'll see a lot of those. Ooh, this is a cool piece of driftwood too. Look at that. That's really cool. I love cool pieces of driftwood. Like I said, this is where, look at all the driftwood, right? Tons of driftwood. We're also going to find in here, besides egg casings and driftwood, you're gonna find a lot of pen shells. So pen shells are really common. People ask all the time um, what they are and they are bivalves. Okay, so here on this pen shell, pen shells are another really popular place for shells to lay eggs. I couldn't tell you what kind of egg casings these are. They're teeny tiny on here, if you guys can see them. They did hatch, you can see the little holes in the top of them, so they did hatch, which is great. And I'm not sure what kind they are, but that is really cool. Look how, look how fun. I love finding new types of egg casings. I do, because 
I want to like write a book because there isn't one. I want to put down an identification guide to the different egg casings of different shells. So you're going to find lots of horse conch. Like all these are horse conchs. Lots of horse conchs. And then lots of whelks. And sometimes we'll find um, other odd ones too. Ooh, this one here. This one here is a tulip. But the tulip one that I showed you before, oh, and I should go back and get it to show you a comparison. Let's see if I can take this up without ruining it. All right, I gotta go rinse this off, hold on. Okay, I found another one here. This is just on a sea tree, okay? But this is the same egg casing that I showed you before. Can you see the shape of the C? Okay, these are banded tulips. Okay, so the tulip egg casings right here, and you can see that even though this was completely dried out, I just rinsed it off, but there's little, I'm sorry, there's little shells still in the egg casing. And it didn't hatch, sadly. It's probably been out here drying. It probably just got washed up, but you can see the little baby shells. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know it's kind of hard to see, they're so small. But there's little baby shells inside the egg casing, and these are banded tulips, okay? Then we have this one, which is attached to this clamshell. And do you see how they're kind of like a flowery pattern at the top? Can you guys see that? They're kind of like ruffled. I guess ruffling is a good word for it. They're kind of a cone shape, right? See how it's kind of a cone shaped? But there's no ridges on the cone and then they're flowery at the top. This is a true tulip egg case. And then if you can see the little holes in the top here, this is where the babies hatch. Now it doesn't look like they all hatched, which isn't uncommon. So like this one right here doesn't look like it hatched. This one did. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in, in view. This one hatched right here. There's a little hole. This one did not. So some of them hatch, some of them don't. Um, and then on the egg casing, you have more egg casings. Okay, look at this. So I'm not even sure what kind of egg casings these are attached to the egg casing. You see those? So that's really cool to see. And then here's some more over here too. And I'm not really quite sure what kind of specimens those would have been. So there's egg casings on the egg casing. So that's really, really cool. So we've got the true tulip and the banded tulip egg casing there. Okay, continuing on. Like I said, I am no, by no means an expert on egg casings, but I do like to find them. Oh, here's a pretty angel wing. I do like to find them and I do like to, um, I would love to know when I find one that I don't know what it is. Um, I would love to be able to know the difference. So here, I believe, oh, here's a big Melampa. Let me put that in my bag. Here's what I believe. Can you see how this is a little bit thinner than the other? Let me see if I can grab a whelk egg casing somewhere. Um, this one. Let me grab this one over here. Okay, so if you guys can see how like these are thicker, right? Like that's how thick they are. And these are thinner, they're very thin. You guys can see how thin. I believe this is your lightning whelk, then this is gonna be your pear whelk. Don't quote me on that. But I believe this is gonna be your pear whelk egg casing. Much thinner than your lightning whelk. Can you guys see the difference in that? So that's kind of cool. It could potentially be a paper thick too, but I, I'm pretty sure if memory serves what I was told. Let me get this. And there's a paper fig. And then up here, we've got a little sea urchin. So this one's all cleaned out for us. So it's completely empty and it still has some spines on the top. Um, but if you can see, these spines are starting to dry out. 
So they come off really easily. So they just rub right off. And then this will be left to be a beautiful shell. Let me get these off and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here is your urchin all cleaned up. No more spines, completely empty. So this is gonna be a beautiful specimen. Um, if you bleach this, it will bleach. It will either turn a very, very light purple, a light pink, or even sometimes it'll turn um, sort of white. They are really pretty if you bleach them, but just know that it will change the natural color of your sea urchin. The other thing is once it's completely dry, you can coat it in Mod Podge or you can coat it um, in clear Elmer's glue or white Elmer's glue, and that'll help preserve it and make it a little bit more sturdy and not as fragile. So that's kind of a tip for you guys for preserving your sea urchins. Looks like there's another angel wing here. Let's see if it get it out, see if it's whole. Oh, I think the tip's broken a little bit, but that's still really pretty. I love finding angel wings. Um, up here, we have another kind of egg casing, which is really cool. So this one is going to be an apple murex, which is really fun. Um, trying to see if any of these have hatched. If you can see right here where my thumb is, that would be the little hole where they hatch from, but I don't see any of these holes being open. So I don't think this one made it. If you can see, here's another little hole right here. You can kind of see the little, the little hole openings that are covered still. But this is what your Alpo Murex, so you guys want to know why, why Alpo Murexes are so popular, right? Like look at this egg casing and all of the bajillion little Apple Murex babies that would come out of it. So that's an example of your Apple Murex um, egg casing, which is really fun. Let me see what else we've got. Here's a little paper fig. Sometimes the paper figs get washed up and stuck. I shake all this sand out and all this stuff and they actually make it. They make it whole, which is awesome. Looks like here's a big one up here. It's a big one? Yeah, look at that. That's really fun too. Look how pretty. They're another really fragile, fragile shell. And here is a pear whelk right here. So let me just show you guys the difference real quick in the pear whelk and the paper fig so you guys can see the difference in the two. So they're both going to be right-handed, okay? So what that means is if you flip them over, the aperture or the opening is on the right side. On lightning whelks, they're left-handed, so the opening is on the left side. So both of these whelks are gonna be right-handed. And then typically speaking, you're gonna have more ridges here. Let me see if you guys can hear it. You guys hear that? A little bit more rigid than the pear whelk. This pear whelk doesn't have a lot of pattern, um, but you'll also feel it's much heavier, hence why a paper fig is called a paper fig because it literally feels like paper. This one's gonna be heavier. It's also gonna have more of a gradual point here at the top on the spiral, whereas your paper fig really doesn't. It just kind of has um, a nubby little point at the top there. So that's going to be how to tell the difference between your paper fig and your pear whelk. And we've got lots of egg casings that have washed up here, right? So we have our um, horse conch, so you can see that it has, let me see if I can pull one of these off. You can see that it has the ridges here on it. It kind of looks like an ice cream cone, but it has those ridges down the side. Um, then we're going to have your tulip, your true tulip, which is kind of the same shape, but doesn't have any ridges. It's smooth and then it has kind of the ruffles on the top. So you can still kind of see remnants of the egg. I don't think these were ever fully formed, but you can see the remnants um, still inside and the liquid still inside because these have not hatched. You can see the little hole opening where it would be, but these have not hatched. 
then on the bottom of this pen shell, so this is the top, we've got the, the true tulip. On the bottom, we've got these question mark egg casings that I'm not really sure what they are. Um, they're kind of a teardrop or a leaf shape. And I will have to investigate further um, what these are. And then you've got your lightning whelk egg casings here that kind of look like a dragon. And then we've got your banded tulip here which has kind of that C shape, right? And you can kind of see the remnants in there too. Unfortunately, a lot of the times the egg casings will be attached to something, um, the sea floor, a shell, a piece of driftwood, whatever. And unfortunately, a lot of times in a, in a storm, they just get detached and wash up and then they dry out. So. But that's one of the reasons why you'll see so many egg, egg casings and eggs is because, you know, not a lot of the shells are going to make it. Not a lot of them are going to hatch. And when they do hatch, they still have to make it to adulthood, right? They have to get not eaten by other shells. And then here is a good example of what I believe is going to be that um, pear whelk. So you can see it's a lot more thin and they're, they're kind of in like more of a, um, a clump and not so much the spiral shape like the lightning whelk. So those are a bunch of different egg casings for you guys um, to see in all of this uh, fun rack line, which is super, super exciting. Here too, let's see, here's another example of that. Let me get in the sun here, of the banded tulip. So you guys can see what that looks like too. So fun, right? Okay, so we made it to the end of this, this kind of pile here and um, it's so fun. There's so many fun beachy treasures to be found. But what I wanna do now is I wanna show you guys this little um, kind of area where we've got some more wash up of some driftwood and some sticks and everything. And this is where a lot of shells will get stuck. So they all kind of wash up here into a pile. And this is um, a really great place to be able to check out some fun shells and see if we can find anything exciting. So you can see back here, there's another lightning whelk egg casing um, kind of stuck back there. Here's a lightning whelk here too. And so we're gonna kind of investigate this little area and see um, what kind of fun things we can find. So let's get down here, move this piece of driftwood out of the way. Lots of conks. You're gonna find so many conks. And this is a this is a place too where you know if you need to have um, a digger, grab a pen shell. Get a bigger pen shell like this. Um, or you can grab a broken piece of you know whelk or conk or something. And this is a good place to be able to kind of dig through some of these shells and kind of move stuff around in these shell piles. Look at this cute little apple murex right there. Well, here's a gaudy pretty gaudy and look at this look at this really pretty beautiful king crown so pretty Let's see if I can get up here see if I can find anything else there's a fun little pattern juvenile conch I love those fun little patterned shells like that so unique and fun Let's grab another pen shell and kind of dig through, sift through, see if anything pops up here. Ooh, what's this? Look at this horse conch in the very back here. Look at that. See that? Look how pretty. And then what just caught my eye over here that I would have never seen, do you see the little true right back here? Look how pretty this is. Look at the, look at the baby true. Look how gorgeous. Beautiful little true tulip. Absolutely beautiful. And I would have never seen it 
had I not gotten down there to get this horse conch. So that's a reason why you kind of have to really get down and check behind all these roots and stuff. And kind of dig around a little bit in some of these little wells. Oh, here's a really pretty olive. Look at this. Such a pretty olive. Look at this little piece of driftwood here with all of the barnacles on it. That's really fun. That's really cool. We'll throw that in our shell bag. My shell bag's getting kind of getting kind of heavy. Let's see what we've got back here too. So this is a little fun little pile here. Look at this giant olive. Oh my gosh, that's a huge olive. There's a little auger here, and this is a good place two to grab something. There's all of these big um, oyster shells and they kind of make good diggers too. So let's kind of move some of the shells around. Here's another example of um, one of those shells that people find that they're like, oh, it has so many holes in it. Well, those are made by a boring sponge. So a sponge actually kind of consumes the shell and, and makes all those little holes, which is kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. Gives the shell a little story, a little personality. And look at all the little minis and tinies. Oh my gosh. I could stay here all day looking for minis and tinies. This is crazy. I'm gonna move some of this away and see what we can find. another little king crown right here. There's a lace murex right here. Very nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's see if you guys see anything down here get down and we'll look at this big dark dark apple murex look how pretty it's beautiful uh oh I think I broke my pencil yeah you always want to make sure if you grab something to dig with that it's strong enough to kind of dig through a lot of these um a lot of these shell piles, the bigger shells. Oh, and here, so we find a lot of these, I call them baby angel wings, but they're actually false angel wings. Um, I love them because they're still angel wings and they're small, but the difference is that they're not gonna have the ridges. Do you see the ridges here? The ridges stop about here and then it's more smooth. So if you ever find a really small angel wing and you want to know if it's a true angel wing or a false angel wing, that is the way to tell. Check and see if it has these ridges going all the way up. So that is a false angel wing. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of checking out this rack line here, learning about different types of egg casings and the different types of beach treasures you can find aside from finding amazing shells in awesome shell piles like this. Uh, thank you so much for your support and for joining me. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or requests, you are welcome to message me directly at virtualshelling at gmail. Dot com. Until next time, I hope you have a shell-tastic day and I'll see you again soon.